So uh, the next question we have here from uh, Christiana Eltrian. Um, and I, I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but we're, we're using a, a voting system. Uh, so, you, you know, in order to, to uh, get some of the, the more popular questions, you know, uh, I'm selecting from the ones that have the highest votes. And this one, it definitely has a lot of votes. It's a How very, can you tell where you see the votes? Uh, so in the, uh, the, the Q&A, in the, the lower left-hand uh, area of the question, there's a, a thumbs up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah okay, I see yeah. It. Okay. Uh, and uh, th this one has the, the second most votes uh, on the board. So, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, can you tell us something about the human body's capacity to change shape? That is uh, shape shift. I remember you referred to this in some conferences. <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, Christiana <laughs> is on with us. Christiana, that you would ask me this question. Oh. <laughs> What's a girl to do? The, <laughs> you always the thing, curveball. No, it's because I love you so much. And I know people want to hear this stuff from you. And uh, plus, I had a class recently where two of your team participated. Um, David Knox and Andrea Malone. And David has asked me specifically this question about your approach on shape-shifting. Uh, I said I'm going to ask you today and then I'm going to detail. <laughs> well, I didn't want to make any mistake and uh, wanted your approach. Oh, my battery is going off. <laughs> okay. okay, go ahead. Again. Are you in Romania? Are you being a good Yeah, girl? I just got down from the Sphinx now. I was there all day. Wow. I'm having a blast. I just got home. <laughs> Oh, wow. I didn't have time to change yet. Ah. <laughs> yeah. How was it at the Sphinx? Had a great day. You can yeah. tell. <laughs> this is my yeah. face after the Sphinx. <laughs> uh, I, uh, it was great. It's fabulous. I sent you a pic. Oh, wonderful. Let's see. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for people that don't know, we're talking about the Romanian Sphinx. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Sphinx connected to the one in Egypt. And there was a lot of helicopters today carrying stuff. I didn't understand what they were carrying, but I'm going to research that. Yeah, because they're in the middle of nowhere there, no? Exactly. It doesn't make sense to carry stuff over there, but yet they were. <laughs> then there's a so, cave underneath that was opened by the governments at one point, right? Mm, yes, and it's not made public. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, no, it's OK. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that it can be visited or, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it cannot be visited. Isn't it guarded? It's uh, quite hidden. <laughs> OK. Um, Not only... so in any case, um, yes, shape shifting. Well, you know, it's important for people to realize, and this is something we keep forgetting, is that we're constantly shape-shifting, right? Yeah, definitely. We, we think of ourselves as stable because we see our body every day. And, you know, we assume because it looks the same, it, look, it looks the same very, I, I should say on the very rough level, meaning, you know. At the basic level, yeah. Yeah, on the basic level, meaning, your hair looks the same, you know, as when you looked at yourself yesterday, right? But they're not the same because they grew, right? And and your mm -hmm. hair on your legs or your leg, I mean, I, I'm talking about my legs. You don't Thank have- Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but you never know after being in the woods for a while, but- um, No, it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, your hairs on your arms, whatever, they look like they're the same as the ones yesterday, but they grew, right? And they changed and your skin changed. Like every seven days, you, you change your whole skin. You don't have the same skin. You're not the same person. You, in, and within a few months, you change almost all of your organs. You've changed your, you know, and then, you know, over a period of three years, you change your whole body, like all your bones, 
you change your bones in every, every few months, right? So you're actually constantly changing. It's like you're constantly, I like to, I, I'm going to do this one day. I, I've always wanted to do like, um, like, um, you know, a cartoon where you would see, you know, all the pixels that we're leaving behind and the pixel like that are being reconstructed constantly, you know, um, and because we're constantly transforming. So Absolutely. this is something that biology doesn't know. Like, why are we, when we're transforming, why are we keep transforming to the same thing? Meaning, right? Like, where is the information that says to the cell, when you change, when you divide and you change and all this, continue to make your nose the same way and continue to make your fingers the same way, right? Like, like for instance, your, your imprint on your finger, your, uh, your print on your finger, right? Yeah. It's specific to you. And it says it stays specific to you for your whole life. Your whole life, yes. Yeah. How does it remember? How does it know that, right? So like, for instance, because in a few days, it's not the same skin anymore. Not the same finger, yeah. It's not the same finger. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and it's like, you took that print when you were like, you know, 10 years old, and now you're like, you know, in your case, you're 22, right? And, uh, well, around 37. <laughs> and it, you know, 10 years later, 20 years later, you know, 50 years later, you take that print and it's the same print. How is it? Well, where is the information for that to happen? And never mind, like, you're constantly rubbing your fingers, you're constantly touching things, you're constantly cutting yourself, you're constantly doing all kinds of things to those four fingers, but it always grow back to where it was, right? So where is the information in there? Well, the information is, is in the structure of space, meaning the, 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 you're just growing back to the space, the information in the space, right? Yeah. So let's say that you could change that information. You actually can, yeah. You, let's say you can, right? And you, let's say you actually can. Well, that means your body, when it grows, it would have to regrow into that new information set, into that new um, way of being, in that new, like, information structure and you could change you know the shape of your nose or you know the the prints on your finger that that could be useful that for... would be useful <laughs> it could be scary for the police but um you know um the so basically it shows you how, and that, I mean, people that lose limbs talk about it, right? They talk about how they feel like the limb is still there in the space. They still feel pain sometimes at the level of where limb was, yes. Exactly. Or like when you, you know, like it, it's been shown that if, if a child before the age of 10 cut their finger up, like loses part of their finger, if you don't sew it, it, it can regrow, right? So it, what is it regrowing in? Uh, or, you know, like, a, like a, a frog, you know, you can, they can regrow their legs or, you know, like there's many animals that can regrow their limbs. So it's like the information network is in the space and, and, the, and the particles, the molecules are, are just refilling the space with the information that was there. So yeah, I find and it very plausible that you could change the information 
or you can enhance the information. And if this is true, Christiana, that would mean that there would be techniques that could be developed. And there was, there was, a, there was a doctor in the 60s, I believe, that worked on this and got some really good results. There would be techniques that could be developed in which if you lost a limb, you could regrow it. Regrow it, exactly. Or, or for example, remote healing. When you instant, remote healing is shape-shifting. Yeah. When you instantly make a tumor disappear, you shifted the shape of a specific body okay. part that was healed into a specific, into a body part that is healed. And that's shape-shifting. Or for example, it could, you speak about remembering information in the body from this lifetime and the limb feeling pain at the level of a limb. But what about people that are born with birthmarks and you feel pain? For example, I have a birthmark under my left rib and I feel pain in that area that goes to the, to, to the fingertips, but I never was hit in that area in this lifetime, <laughs> you know? So okay. it's a memory from, so body restructures information even from other timelines. That's what I'm saying. And, oh, and it's yeah. been researched, I That's believe. That's becoming more esoteric, but yeah, they, there's definitely, there's definitely, so for instance, there's a case in India, right? Yeah. Where, um, where this child, so this child, at the age of five said that he remembered his previous life and he yes. said he, he was a oh you got your rabbit there <laughs> he's so cute he's watching he's watching he's listening with his big ears <laughs> what's his name rabbit is his name right yes exactly i <laughs> keep it simple how do you say rabbit in romanian yeah put it yeah, put it. Yeah, put it, yes. Ah, um, I think it's, it's the first Romanian word you learned, I remember. <laughs> okay. Um, so when you... Okay, so this child remembers his past life. He yes. told his parents that he was a thief and that he was shot in the head he said where, and he said he was shot in the head and he, and he pointed at a birthmark that he yes, had yes. on his forehead. And so the parents, the kid was insisting on this. So the parents eventually tried to figure out if there was such a person, you know, in their area when the child was born or something. And if they found existed. that the the very day that that child was born, a thief, a few blocks away from where they were, where the child was born, was shot in the head, exactly in the same place where the child has the birthmark, right? So imagine that. That means the birthmark would have had to happen within the next, the few, you know, it was an imprint, yes. the last minute just before it was born, right? And then, yeah, and he, he was quick to come back also, <laughs> I, I, I must notice. Right. Well, I believe that's the case in many cases. I believe yes. if, you know, I personally think that past, past life is a reality, that life and consciousness, you know, continues past the body because I see no reason why information should be lost. The, this is straight up physics, you know, no information can be lost. And a person is a definitely a set of information, right? And I see no reason why it wouldn't sustain and why it wouldn't just use some more matter to come back in. I, I, I think that's very consistent. And there's many, many evidence of that. But yeah, uh, they're doing case, research now in, in Tibet and in India. It's a frequent case to just check the house where the child says it lived before and the parents go with the child and they find the genes with the note he left stuff like this it's common yeah. common thing yeah right <laughs> it's and a so, documentary yeah it's documented so basically you know there's so not only is your body 
we know your body is holding very specific shape based on your genealogy, for instance, right? So that's not so esoteric. We know that. But how is it holding the information of all the genealogy before you for thousands of years? How it's is it holding that? Where is this information? You, you got to tell me that because of a few genes, right? It, it has all the information of thousands of people before you? No. Not exactly. Uh, yeah, most likely not. So the so maybe the genes are like the antennas tuned to a set of information. And maybe yes. when you incarnate, you always incarnate in the same set because you're continuing a set of information. You see, you can't a just- A blueprint. You, yeah, a blueprint. And this is maybe why people say, I knew you in the previous life or there was a relationship or, you know, because there's these timelines, right? These, these incarnation loops that are occurring. So it's a very interesting uh, subject and it can, be, it can be explored very deeply. And, and uh, you know, also the way that DNA replicates, it's called semi-conservative replication. So you, you've got the two strands, right? To make the double helix, they unwind and each serves as a template to make two new double helix strands. And that goes on to, to form the gametes that, you know, make the new person. Uh -huh. But because of that semi-conservative replication, you have an unbroken chain of entangled DNA strands. Right. You know, so you've got a, a mechanism right there where this entanglement can be conserved down thousands of generations. Uh, and, and you know, that entanglement, that's like in the space-time structure. Oh, that was awesome. That's cool. William, you're so brilliant. I love you, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's great. It's great. Um, yeah, totally. So, you know, we could write the mechanism of information entanglement across generations. And eventually, we might be able to even now put an equation for information reincarnation structure in within the you know gene information like uh, uh, entanglement flow right that, that would be interested to to watch so the basic question was how do you shape shift what's the method uh, i mean what what you would you to... say would be possible for for that to happen for example if you want to change your nose shape or the years if you don't like them or something like <laughs> or or, or, or like illness I experience but I'm gonna skip that uh, yes, yes. No. or an illness for example yeah and shape shift an illness into health that would be important to know yeah it uh, it has to be that you have to be very deeply connected to the structure of the vacuum, meaning you you have to be able to deeply influence it. And that takes some concentration and takes some, you know, deep uh, uh, empathy with the structure of space. And in some cases it can be uh, difficult. Uh, in some cases, you know, some, uh, emotional um, entanglement have to be undone, right? That can block it, yes. Unblock and, and, some, and, and some of that can be difficult for you to unblock because you might be blind to it. You, you might not know you don't what see it. exactly. And that's why illness, I mean, happens. You know, I have challenges you know, you know, people that are very evolved can have challenges. Um, it, you know, it's not, it's not that straightforward. It's not that easy, right? It's not, um, it, it can, and, and then it might be easier to change the shape of your nose than to like get rid of a tumor just because of like, 
um, all this entanglement of DNA throughout the generation and all this, you know, they, they might be yeah. things that are harder to change than others. The but cause behind it is important too, yeah. Yeah, certainly knowing that you have that opportunity, that you have that power is a really good step forward. And then you might as well bring in your, in your field what you need to heal, what you need to heal. So it's not just internal, but it's external as well. You might bring it from the outside, right? So it, it, it's not like a rejection of what can help you from the outside, neither, right? Yes, it, it's, absolutely. It, it's all the same loop. It's all the same thing. It's all one thing. 